Hey everybody. So yeah, we're back. It's uh, the year of the COVID and it's not much racing going on, but we are lucky enough to get a race organized up in North Florida. So this is going to be the Criterium. It was a three race event. So we had the time trial road race on Saturday, followed up by the crit on Sunday. So this is actually the crit. Um, What's cool about this is this is actually the national crit course and the day before we did the road race and the day before that we did the TT or um, so we actually got to ride the national the amateur national course but what I'm going to do on this video is you know instead of just kind of going over everything that happened in the race I'll let you watch it but I kind of reached out to my Instagram viewers and ask them to ask questions and a couple people got back uh, so I'm just gonna get right into it the first question is um, how to get in a breakaway and tactics used in a race and this is a good question um, how to get in a breakaway I mean every race is different and you, you know that's that's my main goal is to always get in a breakaway but it doesn't always happen the, the, the caliber of riders matters the amount of teams matter um, so you really got to go into it and evaluate exactly what your plan is going to be and and execute it. Um, also, to be a breakaway rider, you you got to be strong enough to to get in a break and survive a break. You know, a lot of people come to these races and it's almost like pack fill. And there's nothing wrong with that because pack fill sometimes holds some of the strongest sprinters. And if it goes to a field sprint. I'm not surviving that. So I, I like to try to separate myself. So those are my tactics. Uh, separate myself from the main field, get, get away from the main sprinters, and try to get in a small group of committed people that will want to work and take the thing to the end. And then, you know, every end of the race plays out different. You really can't say once the breakaway established how, how the race is going to end because you can have flyers at the end you can have the main sprints you never know um, so that's a good question the second question I got was how to win without a team and sometimes it's actually easier to win without a team than it is to win with a team so the reason I say that is without a team you show up you have no real you know teamwork that you need to worry about you're not working for anybody you're just kind of a lone soldier out there so when I go without my team I try to just once again get in a breakaway and, and work it to the end um, another, another thing you know if other people are showing up without a team working with other teams that you know get in a breakaway and, and try to motivate other teams to want to help or ride the coattails of another breakaway that a team is trying to establish um, and, and just be in the moves that's what the key thing is if, if you're gonna sit in and and miss opportunities and you're not you're not gonna win bike races you gotta take a risk and if you're not willing to take that risk then sometimes you know you're gonna be going home with the 20th place which it's not bad it's all about having fun but I know I don't show up to try to get 20th place. So racing without a team definitely has pros and cons. Uh, another good question, uh, the differences of racing in Miami versus North Florida or any other location? And that's a good question. So my team is based out of South Florida, Miami, uh, Amino Rip Racing, and a lot of our local races are held down there. So, and when you race in Miami, you know everybody. You ride with them on the weekends. You're friends with them. You know how their riding styles are. You know that this is a breakaway guy. You know this is a sprinter guy. So you have to, you know, change things up. And, and almost, I feel that every race in Miami kind of comes down to the same exact scenario every time. You either get a breakaway or you get a field sprint. And the breakaway people win or the field sprint people win. So first, North Florida, where, you know, you have a lot more teams that you don't race with all the time new members are coming on 
uh, people that you're not familiar with, you know, people that like to hide in and the next thing you know, they have a 400 watt, 20 minute power that are going to ride you off their wheel. So uh, it's always a big surprise when you're racing with different teams or different faces rather than your local crit community or your, your local race community. Um, good f number four question, uh, post effort recovery. You already know a mean rip. That is the best post-effort recovery. Also, love to sit in my Normatec boots, and I also use, like to use my Hyper Bowl. Those are all, you know, Epsom salt baths, massages, which I've actually never had a massage in my entire life from a, a professional massage. I, everybody swears by it, I just have not ever had the opportunity to get one. So the Normatec boots, that always works nice. The, the compression boots to help flush out that lactic acid. And, and easy spins. When, when, you know, zone one spins, light on the pedals, help flush out that lactic acid to help get you ready for those, those harder workouts. Those are all very important uh, opportunities to take, take advantage of. Number five, how to race a pro one two crit and be efficient <laughs> that's a good one so how to race a pro one two don't upgrade too quick when you upgrade too quick and you don't have the time to invest in training you're going to be driving five hours to get spit out the back in three laps it's just the reality of it everybody wants to have that pro one feel of like i'm a cat one racer don't do it it's it's so much more difficult going from three even to a two from three to two is a huge jump because then you race with the pro one fields and and the big difference between the pro one field pro one two and cat three i feel personally was teams like the organization of riders and the quality of riders is is a huge jump and you know there's strong people in cat three but the organization that a pro one two field has you know it's so much just more involved so to be efficient with that you got to have the power you got to have the smarts and that's one thing i lack is the smarts um i got to get smarter i got the power i got to get smarter but if you don't have either of those and you cat up because you want to stage race somewhere um and you gathered a bunch of points and you get there too early it's not going to be fun. So just do your time and, and enjoy racing. Um, and that's that's basically, you know, that's the, the five questions I got from people. I, you know, I got some other ones laid on, but I've already edited the video. So that's what I'm going to stick with. But to kind of jump into this race, um, <clears throat> I ended up doing really good. Uh, not as good as I wanted to, but I won the TT. I, the road race, I had a really bad road race, and why I say that is, you know, going from winning the TT, I felt like my leash in the road race was really short to begin with. I had a lot of people watching me, and a break went really early, like five miles into this 75-mile road race, and that's really early for a break to go, and usually the first break doesn't stick. Well, this break had some super heavy hitters in it, and it, it actually went up the road quite a, quite a distance. And by the time that I realized that it was a threat, I launched an attack to bridge to it. And when I was bridging, I was ended up in a block headwind. Uh, there was a backside of this course going into the finish line that I felt like was like a 20 mile per hour headwind. Um, and I was bridging and I was, and I was putting in a huge effort such in, so early into the race and I did the time trial that morning where I averaged 412 watts for 26 minutes. So my legs were already toast. And I got about 20 seconds off the back of this threatening breakaway and I looked back and I noticed the entire field is strung out chasing me. So I kind of thought to myself, why am I doing all this work to bring back this breakaway? I'm sitting up and I'm just going to go back to the field and hopefully it gets brought back. Well, as soon as the field caught me, they all sat up. We had a couple flyers going off the front, but everybody, theoretically, they sat up and that breakaway stayed away for the entire race. Um, Got in another breakaway, like a chase group here and there. Put a lot of day efforts in trying to catch, but they had two minutes on us, so uh, I, you know, I kind of settled and, and realized that that race was over. 
ended up getting like 28th place, cramped up. Everything about that day was terrible. The last lap was in a torrential downpour. It was getting dark. Um, so double cramps, calf cramp, I think my tricep cramped. It was, it was very crampy. Um, so that I only got three points from that. So going into the crit, I had 43 points. And I think I went from first to fifth place. And I knew I had to do something on this crit course. And of course, as you can see right now, it started to rain. And But I actually ended up snapping a spoke or the, uh, the nipple of the spoke going around the first turn. And I, I felt my wheel go out of true. So I like went straight off the course and I ran over and I did a wheel switch really quick and I got back in and I noticed when I was waiting to get thrown back in that uh, we had a single ride rider breakaway up the road and then we had my coach Owen trying to bridge that breakaway. So I thought I need to get to that. That is two people that I know that want to work. Um, so once I got in, as you saw in this video earlier, I kind of re reorganized myself and waited for an opportunity to jump off the off the back of the field. And I put in a good like four minute dig to catch them. And actually right now in this video, you'll see I'm just about to make connection with these guys. Um, and we worked pretty well together for, for the most part. Um, we had we had a decent gap on them. When I look back onto the course, it was a pretty technical course. So when I was in the field, there was a lot of slowing going through that back chicane, that downward, that downhill chicane. And then this part of the course was actually like a slight, like one to two percent uphill going into the right turn that kicked up a little bit more. So we kind of took it easy on the climbs. And took it faster through the chicane and the, the turns because it was only three of us. So I knew we would gather a couple seconds with each lap. Unfortunately, it was raining. It was such a nice course when it was dry. Um, I really had a difficult time in the uh, second, the third right turn. Like there was this like white paint strip area that every time my wheel hit that it would kind of skip over and skip over. Um, so it was almost a guarantee I was waiting to wash out on that corner. Never did happen, but thank God. Uh, always good to come home from a race without any road rash or broken bones. But the kid in the front, uh, Artem, I believe his name is, he races for Kelly Benefit. The kid is 16 years old on junior gears and a five-time national champion. So if that doesn't say much, then I mean, the kid is raw talent. Unbelievable that he is in a breakaway with two riders that are so much older than him and he's on junior gears and he's he wins, he beats us. So kudos to him, it was an impressive ride and an impressive ride by my coach Owen. And the overall ended up being uh, Michael Hernandez came in first, um, always talented, very top level rider. Uh, second place came from Novo team and third place was Artem from Kelly Benefit. So, and I ended up getting fourth overall, which I'm happy, you know. Some things kind of, you know, like we talked about before in the road race it happens, it's racing, you can't win them all. You make decisions and those decisions either work out for you or they, or they work against you. So, but to kind of talk about, you know, the ne next weekend or this weekend coming up, we have the state road race. So we're going to be racing the age group and we're going to be racing the category. And this is going to be like the last race to kind of finish up our race season. There's a couple other local crits that we'll do in Miami, but this is going to be, this weekend will be the, the the last of whatever season we had during this year of 2020. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for watching. If you guys could subscribe to my channel, I'd really appreciate that. Let me know if you like these videos. If you hate them, go ahead and let me know that too because uh, I love the haters. Thanks for watching.